the human ability to create pleasantness within himself or unpleasantness within himself is quite limitless. If it was a conscious choice, I believe nobody would choose unpleasantness, unfortunately. Too many human beings, for too much of their lifetime, they dwell on unpleasantness. It is not because there is something wrong with the world. It is just that what you call as human is a certain dimension of freedom. When, when we said the only goal in life is mukti, our ultimate liberation, this is not a made-up idea, this is not an idea concocted by someone who felt very bound. This is not an idea of an entangled being. This has not come from deep states of entanglement. This has come simply by looking at the nature of the fundamental of how a human being is built. This moment, whatever the nature of who you are right now, because it's essentially happening out of choice, and choice is an outcome of a certain deep-rooted freedom which could have been easily curtailed. No other creature on this planet can choose either to be joyful or miserable. Whatever you subject them to, whatever kind of treatment you subject them to, that is what they become. It is only this one creature who is capable of this that he can choose to be either blissful or create many different states of agony within himself. So the very fundamental of human nature comes from this freedom. It is in exercising this freedom that you can allow your humanity to overflow. When we say being humane or being human, unfortunately most people are referring to acts of kindness. No, being human essentially means that you can choose what is your experience right now in your life. And if choice was conscious, obviously it would be one of blissfulness. 
we have to redefine this social context of understanding humanity as kindness. Because there are so many human beings who are feeling terribly lost, they have invented this, that kindness is the biggest thing you could do. No, bliss is the biggest thing you could do. Because the essential building block of this being has been freedom and the ultimate goal is freedom. We only said ultimate liberation, we never said ultimate God because there is no such thing. The devotees on the planet, those who are lost in devotion, generally look like nutcases who are others who thought they are smart. But you need to understand, a devotee is one who spends maximum amount of his time and life in blissful states. He is the one who is truly exercising this choice. It is just that he might have become socially incompatible because he did not take care of other things. But he wish, if he wishes, he can take care of other things too. Maybe he didn't care. This is a choice, this is a very intelligent choice that one has to make. Do you want to have everything or do you want to become everything? If you try to have everything, you will die as a frustrated old woman or man. There's no question about that. If you have any doubt, try one more lifetime. If you have a doubt, try it out. After all, what is the problem? There are many lifetimes. You believe in many lifetimes. So what is the problem? You can try and waste one more. Try to have everything and see. You will only try as a frustrated person at the end of your life. So this is an intelligent choice that Radhe makes. Instead of having everything, to become everything, this is a possibility. This is a blessed state. This is something every human being is capable of. It is actually your longing is to become everything. Your mind has misinterpreted it as trying to have everything. Once you become a slave of the logical thought process, now it has misinterpreted this longing to become everything as having everything, as possessing everything. If one does not allow himself to be drenched in the blissfulness of this existence, but rather chooses to be in the turmoil of their own psychological existence, if that's a choice one makes and also has the audacity to believe that they are intelligent, What is the point making an investment that doesn't pay? You make an investment that doesn't pay anything and you go on claiming it's a great investment. What is the use? If you fall like this, life becomes one way. If you fall like this, it becomes another way. It is just that like a coin if you throw it, initially it it flips up all over the place. When it's flip-flopping, you see in flashes faces of this and that. That is what happens when you're youthful because you're yet to fall this way or that way. So you're still flip-flopping. 
a flash of joy, a flash of bliss, a flash of misery, a flash of everything. But now if you do not become conscious and fall the right way, then you could easily fall into the misery's way. Or you can flip-flop forever and remain a teenager for the rest of your life. Remaining in teens does not mean <laughs> does not mean that you are blessed with useful, youthfulness for the rest of your life. It just means that you remain half grown forever to become a steady source of blissfulness for himself and everything around him. If he doesn't choose to become this, either he will fall into depression or he will continue to remain an immature life for always. And when death comes, still flip-flopping, confused that before life got started, it's over. If you've seen people dying, I would say ninety percent of the people die not in bliss, not even in misery, they just die bewildered. There's a look of bewilderedness on their face because when the last moment comes, suddenly they realize they never lived. They flip-flopped all the time. Those who have sunk into deep depression for a lifetime, they will die in misery. It is one kind of established state. Those who are blissful, there is nothing to say about them. But the rest are just bewildered because they spend their whole lifetime in their head. And when the moment of death comes, it is no more a psychological process. <laughs> it's for real, believe me. <laughs> it's not just death is real, life is real too. But it takes the absoluteness of death. Death is absolute. Life seems to be relative but it is not. Life and experience of life for most people seems to be relative but death is absolute. It takes absoluteness of death to wake people up. Just a wee bit late. It's good but just a little bit late. You could do it today, you know, just in case if you die tomorrow, really. <laughs> just in case if you die tomorrow, it's better you wake up today, isn't it? Suppose you survive today, at least do it tomorrow, please. Because the essence of your existence is choice. If you do not exercise this choice, then you will never establish yourself as a human being. You will just remain one more creature which is yes, yet to be, which is yet to form itself. <laughs>